What's up, everybody? I am here with the amazing Victor Woon, checking out Faneuil Hall. Yeah. Here we go. It's a Japanese. You got uh, ice cream. Got some uh, famous potatoes. Blue clam chowder, blue cheese sticks. So all this is, is a bunch of food market area, and it pretty much goes the whole way. Mark, Uber driver, awesome guy, and my good friend Victor. Yo. Yeah. So we got a couple hours to go ahead and jam out some juggling. Yeah. And I packed the lunch. Yeah, if you want some food, just put my jelly sandwiches. If it ain't messy, it ain't good, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so Victor uh, had a unicycle when he was younger, and he uh, pretty much juggled with his brother Rudy. Started on the unicycle. It's pretty awesome. This is Check me in high school. That is awesome, man. The, uh, Look at that, that gear, too. That get up right there. What man, is that? That was a patriot. A patriot. <laughs> I go to football games and basketball games and ride and, and that juggle is awesome. and dance. Man, yeah. so how many ladies you put on your shoulders when you ride that thing? None. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> on skateboards. I'm about to do a show. Yeah. On skateboards. Yeah. That is awesome. He's playing a violin. He's on a longboard. He's on a cello. Cello. Yeah, it's Marco Cotto oh. on the longboard with the violin. Michael Cott. Okay. On the cello. Let's. And me on the bass. Let's get right to it. So, uh, did anybody bail? No way, stayed the whole time up. Yeah, oh yeah. That's pretty good. I yeah. skate too. Anyway, we gotta man, do some skateboarding. I love your world, skateboarding, man. snowboarding, extreme adventures, I love all this stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm so diving. old school. Dude, when I was young, are you old school? Know. I'm old school, man. But my friend, he threw the clubs up on stage and I just act like what? And I started juggling. My audience went crazy. And so he went up, he came up on That's stage awesome. and we threw back and forth, did some passing, and we did some walk arounds and stuff for each other. And then his son came up and we did nine clubs. Wow. It was really cool. Nine clubs? Yeah. Wow, that's cool, man. Yeah. That's awesome, we, man. Yeah, With his yeah, son. With, us, I know, I know, I know. Two of us were yeah. feeding him. Yeah. So he, he were you doing, doing every other? And we were doing every other. Okay, yeah. cool. Look at it. You even know the lingo. Every other side. <laughs> A little bit. Of course you do, man. This me, Check this out. Victor juggling. One, two. I was practicing five, but look at my son playing basketball in the back. <gasps> it looks. <laughs> it, looks <laughs> it looks like six balls, man. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really good. So how's your five now? Not good. All right, I, I, I don't have that. control. Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at your teeth. Take okay. teeth, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what's up. Yeah, I don't have control. I can fix it, I can fix it. I can make you a great juggler easily. It's just small little things, you know, just like bass, right? Just like when you, you put on your three thumbs and play your bass guitar. <laughs> Sounds like three basses at once. <laughs> My favorite song is Can't Hold No Groove, right? Yeah. And I, and I heard, that, heard that song, I was like, man, this guy playing three basses at once? This guy's like, yeah. And then, and then I saw a picture with the yin yang bass guitar. You remember that bass guitar? Oh, yes. Yeah, and I was like, wow, this guy's cool. Victor, what got you into performing? My brothers. Yeah? My brothers, uh, I, when I when I was born, they needed a bass player in the band. And that became me. Yeah. What do you got here, man? This is a picture of me doing a show uh, on a unicycle with my bass. Awesome. I always wanted to be in a circus. I always wanted to Where'd be in that come from? That's a good question. I don't know. I do know that my brother Rudy learn how to juggle mm -hmm. and also learn how to he taught himself how to ride a unicycle that's what got me into that my other brother reggie got a magic set for christmas one year and i i got hooked on it so you came that's from a circus family that's for sure yeah you that's know we, awesome. we we now we just we treat the mu music stage as a circus yeah and yeah. we flip our guitars around i used oh. to do a backhand spring with my bass on well, what you when do is magic on the bass. That's for sure. <laughs> Everyone knows that. So tell me about the, the circus stuff when you were kids. What, yeah. what got you into that? What were some things that you saw? Any things on TV or? You know, I, I just loved people who, I loved ability. People that learned skills cool. and juggling and acrobats. And You're fascinated like that. by that, yeah? Totally fascinated. And uh, like I was telling you earlier, when I was young, they used to have a thing on TV called Circus of the Stars. Right. Where they would take famous people and, and put them in a circus. But the famous people wouldn't do much. They'd have a beautiful actress sitting on top of an elephant while the elephant trainer had the elephant doing all sorts of things and the women just sat there. And I thought, if I ever become famous, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to juggle, tightrope, acrobats, unicycle. And so I started awesome. learning how to do it. But now they don't have Circus of the Stars. But I get to juggle with you, so I'm yeah, juggling man. with the star. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yes. What got you in performing? Like, was your family well, yeah. in performing? Yeah, we were, we've been on stage since we were very, very little kids. Mm -hmm. um, I've been on stage performing at least since five. And, and what I mean is really, you know, in Coliseums. I was on tour at five, wow. opening for great soul singer named Curtis Mayfield, oh, the youngest of, of five brothers. If I was five, my oldest brother Reggie was only 13. 
and he's the one that taught me. So how does a little kid get his brothers good enough to be on a major tour? So I owe them all the credit, but I have been doing it. I've been performing my whole life. I heard that each of you play almost all the instruments. Is that true? Well, I mean, there's a lot of instruments. So I won't say all, but um, in the band, you know, we have Reggie on guitar, Roy on drums, Rudy on sax, Joseph on keyboards, and me on bass. And so that's enough for a band, but everyone does also play different instruments. Yeah. My older brothers play horn, wind instruments, yeah. trumpet, French horn, stuff like that. Um, what got you into bass? Why my you brothers, bass? they needed a bass player when I was oh, born. They so needed a bass player. That was like me, yeah. you know? My dad's a drummer, my brother's a drummer, my brother's a drummer, and I wanted to play bass. They, they needed guitar. something else. Yeah. Everybody's a drummer. Yeah, well, yeah. my brothers were playing all these different instruments. They needed a bass player to round out the band, and so that was me. Wow. Yeah, when you man. first started, uh, what got you more into like playing and, and practicing every day? Where did the, where the inspiration and the spark come from? Well, I, I think the inspiration and the spark came from seeing my brothers do it, and I wanted to keep up. Doing it a lot, and you see the attention you get and the, and the fact that it makes people happy. And then I started learning about, I mean, as a very youngster, I started learning about bass players. So Stanley, when I'm nine, I meet Stanley Clark, one of my heroes. Wow. You know, and I see Larry awesome. Graham, and I see Bootsy Collins right. touring with James Brown, wow. and all of this stuff. And so I'm seeing these amazing bass players doing things I want to be able to do. And so I, you know, practicing is a must at that point. Plus, my brothers were practicing. How many hours did you like, guys practice? What was the practice? It's like? hard to say. You know, I, I, I never calculated it by hours, but we had to do it. You know, we had to do it because we, we were playing weddings, playing concerts, so we had to learn songs. And, then I'd see or hear Jocko Pistorius, and I want to oh learn God, that. Jocko, so I'd, man. Literally, I'd stay up all night until I learned a piece of his or something Did like that. Did you hear about, like, so what was the reason how he died? Was it because he was some guy hit him over the head well, with a bottle? He, he, Jocko was, was going through a, 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 a not good phase of his life where he was just chemically imbalanced. And he was trying to get into, the way I hear it, he was trying to get into a nightclub. They wouldn't let him in. and. The, he tried anyway, who knows what he did, but the bouncer pretty much just pummeled him oh my gosh. and sent him to the hospital and Jeez. he ended up dying because of that. Oh, no. You know, you see all these like greats, even like Jeff Buckley, you know, and something happened with that, you know, and I hear he was in the river and, you know, Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean, a uh, lot of our heroes were successes in music, but not so much as success in life. Didn't have themselves together. Uh, just Have you personally. seen a lot of that in your life when you're performing oh, yeah. with all your friends around yeah, the world? Yeah, especially as a youngster. But now things are changing. Musicians are getting smart. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're not they're not uh, hurting themselves as much. You know, with drugs and alcohol as much. Right. And people are getting smarter and taking better care of themselves. You know, musicians will eat more healthy now. Things like that. So I think it's a better day. Plus, people are easily replaceable. If this musician, I don't like him, I can find a replacement easy now because of YouTube. So now people aren't putting up with bad attitudes. It used to be there was only one Jimi Hendrix. There was only one Jocko. So we put up with whatever just to hear them play. It's not that way anymore. With, with music, it's easy to see these things, but sure. then it's it's better just to go right to what, what the passion well, yeah, was. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, again, I think people and musicians or performers are getting smarter. Mm -hmm. Because once you become famous, you do have access to a lot more things. Right. Women, drugs, alcohol. You get access to all that stuff. But I think people are getting smarter yeah. to, to choose wiser, yeah. wisely. And I was lucky enough to grow up with four brothers who never drink or smoke. Mm -hmm. So I never got into those things also. So I was one of the lucky ones. When I hear Can't Hold No Groove, it sounds like three bases in one. Sure. And the technical skill, it's just like, man, that guy's got to practice for hours and hours yeah. and hours. What was back in the day, day in the life of waking up, getting the bass? Did you guys just practice all day long? Did you guys just jam Sometimes all day long? Jamming. And just jam, jam, jam. Is it, jam. So if you had advice for a bass player who's watching this, what's yeah. the advice for them? Just jam with your friends? Play with people. Practice by yourself a little bit, but play with people. Like learning to talk. You get better talking by talking with people. Okay. Even in a Spanish class, your teacher might teach you a new word, but you don't sit there and practice that word over and over. You practice using the word right. with people. Right. The word is meant to be responded to. It's not just meant to be said, right? And so music the same way. There's a response. If I play this, someone's supposed to respond. So jamming with people is number one. Practice a little, play a lot. And I see that you like playing um, other things. So yeah. you like juggling, you like circus. And tell me this, do you think that's important? <laughs> we'll just do the club for now. <laughs> we'll yeah, we'll we're going to juggle the Nas later. later yeah, later. fun times. But do you feel it. like it's important to have other skills that you love 
yeah. that helped you with bass? The Absolutely. circus has. How much has the circus helped you with the, bass playing? Well, the circus has taught me a lot because I've been, right, a, I've been a fan and I've paid attention to the circus and I've literally trained for the circus. Yeah, I wanted man. to be in the circus as a kid. But it's taught me a lot about performing. Yeah. And when I worked at Bush Gardens in Williamsburg, Virginia, yeah. on and off between 1981 and 1987, I was playing in a country show. I was playing uh, bass and, and bluegrass fiddle. But I hung out with the jugglers and Albert Lu uh, Lucas. And, yeah, I, and, I, and, uh, and I forget these two. Awesome. They weren't brothers, <laughs> but there were something brothers who were doing this comedy acrobatic act, and they rode unicycles on okay. top of a, a a circular ball. I forget their names, but I was hanging out with them, and then the Chinese acrobats were yep. there. Okay, and cool. I was hanging out with them, and they and were, were teaching me things. So stoked to just hang out with them and be with them. That was I your thing. about performing. Cool. cool. Right, a lot of musicians just learn to play their instrument. But that, like you as a juggler, you have to perform. You, you can't show just juggle. You, you have to be showman. a showman. Totally. Connect with the eyes. That's Absolutely. one thing you do. You love to throw the bass high into the air, Absolutely. flip it around. And that's right. where like I feel like, hey, I see uh, the juggling, the circus speak out right there. Right. You know, when you exactly. do your shows. It's flip about it around your body. So I'm learning from you guys all, yeah. all along. Because you guys connect with the audience. Yeah. You have to. Yeah, in other words, Absolutely. You don't have to be a juggler to enjoy you. Absolutely. I don't want you to have to be a musician to enjoy yeah. and appreciate what I do. Where yeah. a lot of jazz guys play music that only musicians understand. Right. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I, I yeah. want to connect with people who don't even know who Victor Wooten is. Right. right. Right? And like for you, sometimes you might do a trick that's very difficult, but doesn't relate to the audience. They don't understand these things. These things are a prop right. that a juggler knows, right? But they right. might understand this because it's right. danger. Right. So you could do this something simple with that. Yeah. But this is more connection right. because it's danger. Exactly. And I want them to feel, oh no, a knife, wow. Right. Okay, five knives, wow. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing connection with you. When I first saw you live in uh, House of Blues, seeing Bella Fleck Tones, it was like a party, man. You were jumping, you were smiling, you were flipping the bass around. The, it was right. so much fun. And exactly. I was thinking, man, this guy plays bass too. He's not even looking at the bass. The whole time he's just all over the place. And you never stopped. Right. Never stopped songs. It was like next song, okay, boom. So I feel like it's like it's like. Tell me this: Is it the eye contact or the head nod? Where everyone's like, okay, your turn. Like, how does it work in the band? Like, all, all when you guys know who's next, it's like, okay, you're next. You jam out. You all jam out. Above, you got. I mean, you, know? you already know. Once you give right. someone an eye contact, it's like, oh, I guess it's my yeah. turn. Bam. Right. But, but it's a lot That's like talking. That's awesome, man. It's a lot like talking. How do you know when that guy's finished his sentence and it's your turn? You're just that good. You know, yeah. we've done it that long enough that we yeah. can hear the musical phrases and I know what he's done. Look at that, you just already you know. What were you playing right there? What song know. was that? Just, it could be anything. <laughs> let's know? talk about your hands. Let's talk about the hands. So let's see, how long has it been until you got your hands to like, uh, uh, I mean, I played, I got calluses, it bleed. I mean, there was a part where it just eventually you just go through that, that process. Yeah. What did you do? Is there things you, know you could what? put band-aids over no. your hands or put some no. Vaseline? I would go to sleep, I would get like blood and like cuts from rings or yeah. juggling clubs and I would right. use like That's aquaphor different. or some kind of Vaseline to go to bed at night you know what I mean and sometimes eventually as my hands get better but it's the same thing with bass bass well, you're gonna get those, here, those here's the thing I'm different blisters I'm different I was playing almost since birth so the same way you learn to walk on your feet since birth the skin grows thick on the bottom of your yeah, feet you're an alien your body's just accustomed to having so bass hands I didn't hands. go through the blister stage the blood I never <laughs> went through there's a bass hands here no let's see how big your head is they're not that big. They're thick. Oh, my hand's almost as big as Victor yeah, Wounds. Look at that. You know, it's not the size. That you don't have to have big hands to juggle. Uh, uh. You know, I've just done it my whole life. I've been so lucky to be born to the right people at the yeah. right time. What's one of the amazing uh, things that happened on stage? Do you have any crazy stories? Wow. I know lot. you got a lot of lot of things. You said that one thing earlier about you getting on stage and juggling with a friend of yours. Sure. On stage. Recently any crazy other incidents? Like, People um, lighting their guitars on fire? Or, well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've broken I mean, mine a lot, you know, like spinning it around my neck and then it flies. I, I almost knocked myself out on stage once because I went to spin the bass and it was an outdoor concert and it was hot <laughs> and humid like this and I was sweaty. Yeah. So instead of the bass going sliding around my neck, the strap just wound up. And it wound up and, and the, the, the horn of the, 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 the bass came and caught me right oh there really gosh. hard. Oh my Boom. gosh. And, and I just went black only for a second. It seemed like a long time. Did your brothers notice? Everyone knows? Yeah. yeah they're like, yo, brother, you all right? Yeah. They actually the show, they're like, are you all right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but my neck was swollen and I was almost out, but I finished the show. And, wow. You know, show must go on. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Speaking of juggling. Let's do let's it. Juggle. Let's juggle. Last question. Yeah. What has performing given back to you? You know what? Enjoyment. You know, the love of being able to make people happy. You know, you make people happy, they in return make you happy. You know, we're in an entertainment business. We are entering into attainment. We are attaining something. 
That's what that word is, entertainment. And the audience helps us do that. And if you give them your all, they'll give it right back. And then it's a union. It's the human experience. Entertainment. Thank you, Victor Williams. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, guys. Time to juggle. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. All right. Let's do this. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Lucian Fuller here. Victor Wooten. Juggling time. Take one. Let's do this. Here we go. Fun times. <laughs> Let's do it. We can make an act. We could. We can totally make an act. Yeah. Got it. Hey, Victor, catch. Ready? Catch. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Danger, danger, danger. Yeah, now that's a knife. All right, grab three, man. You ready for right. it? Here we go. Victor Wooten. First Wugan. time ever. Victor Wooten, first time ever doing knives. Nice and easy. There you go. Perfect. More spoon left. Yeah! It's awesome here in Boston. This still these, recording. Put these in your bag. Really? Yeah, that's Ooh, my, nice. my gift for me to you, okay? Thank you. All right, so you keep those, work on your juggling. So when you're on tour, you have something small to travel with when you're at the airport, and you just practice your three, keep it solid. And then you also have four, so you can work on your four. All right. Nine. Okay. Oh, Sixteen. <laughs> okay. So we got two iced teas. We got some uh, gyoza steamed and fried. Yeah. Yes. You want Thai tea, right? Yeah. Alright, cool. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Yeah, get yeah. some Thai. Awesome. Thank you. Kapum kap. Alright, we got our food. There it is. Victor Wooden's got his shrimp. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We got my beef. Penang. We got some gyoza. Go gyoza. <laughs> Thai tea. Good times, man. Good times. So my mouth is burning because I'm eating a lot of hot stuff. And I just drank all my tea. And it's still on fire. Victor is doing great. I'm doing well. Ooh, we were just talking about practicing. How do you yeah. practice your bass when you don't have your bass? Right. Well, for me, this arm becomes my fingerboard. Nice. So I can think of it that way. And for this hand, these are my four strings. Cool. Four or five. You know, so I can practice thumb technique. And so I'm watching somebody play and I figure out how yeah. they're playing it. And that's how I've always done it since I was a kid. Uh, how did you learn how to do the thumb thing? My brother Reggie. Your brother Reggie? He taught me, you know, any any little What's thing. the technique with that? It's just like using a guitar pick. You just use your phone instead. Okay. It's not hard. Cause a doesn't guitar it tear up your thumb? No. 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 You just do it like a guitar pick. Don't think of it as hard or new. It's just using your thumb like a pick. My brother Reggie showed me that when I was really, really small. All right. So I've done it for a while. Cool, man. Thanks. Yeah, awesome. Thumbs up. That's right. Thumbs up. Practice your, your craft. You know, you can understand this. And you, you, you master it at home. And then you go on stage and you master it on stage. And then there's a point where you get to a point where it's just like, it's beyond that. When you go on stage and you have your bass guitar, it's now a feeling. Sure. And it's just like, oh. It's that song, and it just clicks in, and your mind, your body, everything's in that whole whole rhythm. It's the same thing with, with me and juggling. Most people think about juggling, and the whole thing is if you think, you drop. But if you don't think about it, and you get into the feeling, then you memorize how that feeling memorize, and you memorize how that feeling feels, with that right techniques, you'll run it all day long, and it'll eventually be easier and easier and easier. And everyone thinks like, oh man, juggling, they got gravity, 9.8 meters per second, you're gonna think about this? No, mm -hmm. it all goes away. And that's what it is with this thing. Now I actually have a name for it. 
and so I think about it, and then it clips in, and I feel it. Right, your I hands think about it even two more. It doesn't cramp at all. Uh -huh. It just curls. Yeah. No pain. The fingers just curl. And I think about it, how hard it is, and then it gets harder. Wow. And I have to not think about it. Yeah. All right, on our way back to Berkeley Music College, Big Two has got to teach some classes. That's right. right. So, what's the favorite country you've ever been to? That's a good question. I've had some really good experiences and stories mm -hmm. from a bunch of different ones. Did you go to Japan? Japan. Uh, <laughs> there for like four months, yes. 16 cities. One Mongo of my favorites. Mongolia was great. Mongolia, you went to Mongolia? Yeah, I had a nice. really good experience. Did you there. get the Mongolian slippers? That's like a big uh, yeah, deal. Yeah. I got some yeah. and it's so that's and it wool was there too. during this big wrestling festival that they had. Oh, the like big national sport where that's a big deal. They just try to get their opponent off. Oh no, team. I've seen it. Mongolian strongman. Yep. The, the horseback there. riding with the archery. Yeah. Oh, that's no yeah. joke. Very very cool. Did you play with them like the musicians? Yeah, we did. Gosh. Yeah. Makes you really have to know who you are. Yeah. You know, it's easy to start believing all of that hype. You know. And then it's like, who who are these people? You know, or like yeah. are they out just because of my fame, or they actually want to know me because of me? Yeah. I mean, you sometimes know? they're out because of your your gift. Like that you've worked hard to do, they, they enjoy it. Right, that's but, always good. But what I realize is that what people see in me tells me about them more right. than it does me. In other words, here's an example. Let's say you do a juggling act and a second grader comes over and says, oh man, you know, your your doubles are really tight and the way you, you know, and he starts talking about, and, and the way you flare, you know, he starts doing all this juggling lingo, mm -hmm. talking about you, but he's gonna tell you about him. You're gonna say, this kid, this kid knows his stuff. Right. So how you said Anthony Gotti said these things, I was like, right. okay, I'll right. talk to this guy. So how a person talks about juggling. sees you is telling you about them. So I just never disagree. What did you think about me when I first saw you? Remember when you said to my brother, you're like, hey man, is this guy really quiet? I'll never forget that. My brother, <laughs> my, bro think, my brother is so chill. My brother is so freaking chill. your brother said that. My brother is so chill. He's, he's the opposite. Like, you're twin brothers, right? He's my twin brother. Oh, I'm eight minutes older, he's eight minutes younger. We're brothers for life, man. And to be a twin and play music together is like yeah. so... I like when he's in the pocket, it's like, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, I could feel it. It's weird. It's not one of those things like if, if I, like everyone says, hey, if I kick him, do you feel it? You know, you're like, no, if you kick him, I punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, if, I, if you kick him, you're going to feel it. <laughs> but it's like, it's awesome, man. It's just good to have. I don't know. I don't know what it's like being a non twin, you know? It's yeah, just, right. being a twin is great, you know? When we were yeah, kids. It seems like it would be. I mean, I never did the whole, like, you know, kiss his girlfriend kind of thing, but I guess I, I would try, you know, but we did a thing when we went to church and we, like, changed our clothes because I wore red and he wore blue, as you can see, and then I wore blue once, everyone called me Lance. It was so weird. And you play every note from root to root. Hey, you can do anything, man. Thank you. Yeah, I know I, I can. Just, I know I can. I love that. No wonder no one you two guys are no, no one you two guys are friends. No, 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 we met in Florida a while back. Okay. Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome.